when you're living your life and then all of a sudden you're out there helping cops solve crimes? ABC Tuesday. I have an IQ of 160. I spot things that detectives miss. The series premiere of Fall's most anticipated new drama, High Potential. That big brain of hers is going to help us close out a lot of cases. Caitlin Olsen is the new face of investigation. You're a single mom pretending to be a cop. I am not pretending. I'm just out here super copping. High Potential. Series premiere Tuesday, 10, 9 central on ABC. And stream on Hulu. Sometimes it takes a different approach to help you unlock your true potential. With Capella University's game-changing FlexPath learning format, you gain relevant skills you can apply to your career right away. Earn your degree from an accredited university and be confident in the quality of your education. Imagina tu futuro de otra manera en capella.edu. Capella University is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. Learn more at capella.edu slash accreditation. You can support this podcast at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. I'm Rebecca Lavoy, and this is Crime Writers On. Crime Writers On is the original true crime review podcast that digs into true crime, pop culture, other podcasts. And on this episode, a wedding on Nantucket is ruined by the death of a guest. Is someone in this wealthy but dysfunctional family willing to kill to protect what they have? We'll talk about the Netflix thriller series, The Perfect Couple. Joining me to get that done and more is true crime author, TV journalist, and host of the These Are Their Stories podcast, my husband and love of my life, Kevin Flynn. Hi, Kevin. With no perfect couple reference are we the perfect couple Kevin well I mean to the rest of the world oh. but because I spend most of my time smoking marijuana and trying to strike uh, a seagull <laughs> with my <laughs> seven iron uh, then apparently not well to be fair in that one scene where he brought out the tray of gin and tonics yeah you then immediately brought out a tray of gin and tonics I put it on a tray and everything and you wore an yeah. ascot I, I, found, I have an ascot that I have not found a use for, except when Laura Bricker asks me to dress up in a costume for some public event. Yes. Or when yeah. you're watching The Perfect Couple. I do love a good costume, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> also with my us, ascot for the next episode. Yeah. Also with us is private investigator, certified pet detective, resident cat lady, and author of The Final Curtain, Laura Bricker. Hello, Laura. Hey, Rebecca. And the day this podcast episode drops, Monday? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank How you. old are you? Take a guess. 40? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I am 48. Oh, oh wow. you look great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yep. So I've embarked on a week-long birthday celebration. At the time that this podcast drops, it'll be halfway through. It's her birthday so. week. Birthday week. It's yeah. a birthday week. Yeah. Lance made me a cake. I went to the Tunbridge World's Fair Beer Hall. And there'll be other things that will have happened by the time this podcast episode drops. Other things that have happened. Uh, yes. Dun, dun, dun. Is, is, that the, is that the future perfect tense? What? Well, I don't know. I'm going to Vermont to this, this beer hall thing. And it turns out I saw that there is a world record that they're trying to set in Vermont this weekend for the largest whoopie pie. Ooh. Oh. Very interesting. Does the public get to eat that whoopie pie afterwards or? Well, that's. Kind of what I'm trying to find out because like, I don't want to go watch if I don't get to taste it because I'm like, what's the point? What is the point? Yeah, I haven't quite figured out the point of whoopie pies. It's not my favorite. Yeah. They're just sort they of like- They stick on your teeth. It's just cake, guys. It's just two slabs mm. of cake. Just have cake. Just have cake. I don't know. I had cake for breakfast today. Okay. Mm. And finally, our captain of all things cynical, author of the City Trilogy of Novels, host of Strange Arrivals, and our Patreon deep dive book club podcast host, and the new hit podcast, Rip Current, Toby Ball. Hello, Toby. Hello, Rebecca. Toby, what's your favorite kind of whoopie pie? I'm not sure I've ever had one. What? Big surprise. (laughs) It's possible someone (laughs) stuck one to me one time. Yeah. I've seen them. Just ha- I don't think I've actually tasted it. A whoopie pie is just like a fancier version of like a hostess. Like, yeah, treat. it's like kind of like two pieces of chocolate cake around some whipped cream, right? Mm. I mean, it whipped like, cream adjacent filling. It's not whipped cream. Uh, it's like a it's a little too sweet. Butter I think, the cream. It's like a Susie Q. 
Yeah. yeah. It's like a yeah. fancier Suzy Q. But it doesn't it doesn't stick to your fingers as much because I don't oh, think the does. oil content it is does. the same. It does. Like the the oh. outside of the whoopee, that's why I don't like it either because the outside of it, you end up getting like these fingerprints of just like yeah, it's awful. chocolate shit. <laughs> that's yeah, why it sounds eat. like a nightmare. So do you think that's why they call it whoopie pie? I don't know why they call it whoopie pie. Do you wash it down with a can of Moxie? I don't know. I watched you that who? video of Tim Walls and his daughter Hope buying whoopie pies at that store. Uh-huh. And I heard the story of the that the proprietor told him about the whoopie pie. And apparently it was like the way that like, I, I don't want to be sexist, but this is what I think I heard was that like farm wives used to bring cake out to their like farm husbands in the field or some shit like here, have this. Well, farm wives needed something to do. Why is that sexist? Yeah. Well, because, you know, it just implies that only the farmers didn't the bring any whoopie pies to them. Uh, but, you know, that's, that was just that was the, I think that was the story I heard was that like it was a way for farmers to bring cake out in their lunch pails or whatever. Um, so we'll see. I mean, maybe that's completely inaccurate and I heard it wrong. But I think that is the origin story of the whoopie pie. OK, I'll let you know if I make it to the uh, championship thing, world thing this weekend, I will find out. Yeah. All right. All It'll right. be a mystery to be solved. Uh, All right, Kevin. Yeah. This is Monday's podcast. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday, Laura. Yes. What is coming up on Thursday's program? On Thursday's program, it's Toby's birthday. No, it's yes. not. Okay. I'm just saying on Thursday, no. <laughs> on Thursday, we're going to be talking about the final four episodes of In the Dark season three. So we'll be back. And we'll uh, get to episodes six, seven, eight, and nine. All right. Oh, one thing our listeners could do as a birthday present to Lara. Mm-hmm. They could check the settings on their Apple Podcasts app if they listen that way. And make sure that the Crime Writers on settings for our podcast are set to download new episodes. Mm-hmm. Please. That would be really, really helpful for us because the new iOS thing has uh, you know, been really harmful for our downloads as with, with every podcast. And if you're listening, then you care about the show. And if you care about the show, you should care about our download numbers. And you could really help us out on Apple Podcasts by setting it so that it actually downloads our episodes when new episodes come out. There's a good chance our podcast is open in your app right now. Yeah. So it'd be easy to access. That. Just click those three dots and change the settings on the show, man. Just do it. Rebecca, one more thing before we start. Sure. I want to let everybody know that, uh, again, I will be participating in the Walk a Mile in Their Shoes event, which is a uh, fundraiser for the Crisis Center of New Hampshire. You guys have always been great. When I do this thing where I walk in a pair of high heel shoes, you've been donating money and it goes to benefit all sorts of important services that they offer. This is a special year. I believe this is the 10th year and there's a theme. What's the theme? It's Walk a Mile Eras. That's right. It's a whole Taylor Swift thing. Oh. So, Rebecca, you got to help me come up. I don't know what era I am. Reputation. The reputation? It's the best era. Is that the, do I wear the snake? What is that it's one? It's the snake era, yes. It is. Yeah. Oh, Oh, Damn. All right. So it's my favorite Taylor Swift. I mean, there's just no contest. There's no contest. I don't like snakes, so I don't know if I can support this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, look, there's a link in the show notes for the episodes. And so if you're up to it and you feel inclined, could you please uh, make a donation? It really goes for a great cause. And I'll just point out that last year I was the number one individual fundraiser and it was because uh you guys all came to the rescue so thanks that's right really looking forward to seeing how our listeners come through for you kevin it's a very very exciting event i got to attend last year and it was beautiful it was Mm -hmm. really really wonderful all right so kevin is it time to do our review this week i'm so excited yeah let's do it let's go ahead and drop that first clip right now Leading off. To Benji and his beautiful bride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Wimbry, any words of wisdom for the bride and groom? Oh, come on. Yes. Uh, if yes. you are half as lucky as your mother and I have been, you will have a very long and a very, very happy marriage. Cheers, B. We love you. We love you. Hours before a wedding at the Winberry's Nantucket estate, the maid of honor's body washes ashore. Investigators believe the death was no accident. Listen, if you make these people the enemy, they will bring in their New York lawyers so fast your head will spin. You got to let them think you work for them because the minute they feel they're losing control, they burn it all down. I've seen them do it. All the family members are now suspects in the case. They include man of leisure Tag Winberry, his high strung wife and mystery novelist Greer, and their three sons, Cash Strap Thomas, adolescent Will, and Benji, the groom. Together with the fish-out-of-water bride, Thomas's pregnant wife, a shifty best man, and a French cougar, everyone had reasons to kill Merritt Monaco. But who did? 
Well, if her disappearance had nothing to do with anyone, why ask people to sign NDAs? Yeah, that's yeah. so weird. I mean, why, why can't anyone talk about it? Why, why can't stop. anyone Benji, talk about it? Stop. Benji, would you please ask your fiancé to stop talking? Who are you protecting? Who am I protecting? Based on the best-selling novel, the six-part Netflix series, The Perfect Couple, stars Nicole Kidman and Liev Schreiber and Eve Hewson. The high-profile investigation threatens to undermine Tag and Greer's facade of considerable wealth and an ideal marriage so necessary for their public persona. Spoiler alert, we are going to be talking about very significant plot points from The Perfect Couple. So if you want to remain spoiler-free for this mystery, go to the estimated time code in our show notes for our thumbs-up or thumbs-down reviews. So, Laura, you are an Aylin Hildebrand fan, right? You have read these beachy novels. Yes, they are my guilty pleasure beach read every summer. I've read all of her books. Her last book came out this year. She's finally, like, stopped writing. Kind of reminded me, I, you know, there's always a little bit of, like, yourself in the story. So I'm like, oh, interesting. This one is about an author living on Nantucket. Hmm. But, yeah, they're they're always, like, just sort of, like, suspend reality for a few hours, read this book every summer when I'm like, okay, I'm going to actually sit still for a little bit and read a book. So I've been looking forward to this coming out because I I did read this book. Yeah. So Toby, we have to talk about the heavy hitter actors that are in this show. We have Dakota Fanning. We have Liev Schreiber. We have Eve Hewson, Bono's daughter, by the way, who I really love. We have Bad Megan, sisters, yeah. We have uh, Megan Fahey, who was in this past season of- White Lotus. Of White Lotus. And of course, we have Nicole Kidman. She of the miraculous accents. Uh, what, do you think of the, what do you think of the performances in this series? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the strongest part of it is that you've got really good actors in it. I think Liv Schreiber is very fun in his role. I think Dakota Fanning, uh, she's, she's very funny as this kind of bitchy, resentful wife uh, to an absolutely like... <laughs> good for nothing husband yeah i thought i thought that was good i i think we'll probably talk about nicole kidman's accent uh <laughs> should we just talk about it right now because you you always give me shit not? for talking about her accents Toby. I'll, I'll just say it's totally weird and bonkers and it's just like what is it supposed to be what more so i have you to want? say this when i came here when i came to nantucket to meet your father's family. Do you want to know what I did? I went out. I bought a whole new wardrobe. I, I, I learned to crack a lobster. I, I studied Tom Wolf. In the end, I thought it kind of made sense because you find out that she wasn't born to Upper Crest England because you meet her uh, You meet her brother. Slash pimp. <laughs> who's got this very different sort of working class English accent. So you, you realize that's probably what she grew up having. And so she's been affecting this whatever it is accent the whole way so i chose to believe that instead of just not being able to do an upper crust <laughs> british accent nicole kidman was actually playing on somebody who wasn't in the upper crust then trying to affect being in the upper crust and not doing it particularly well she doesn't really seem to do anything particularly well quite honestly mm -hmm. other than write like these sort of beach read novels but she's not really like on top of anything else or doesn't seem particularly smart or talented. It just seems like she's got a lot of money and like a husband who is sort of ultra low maintenance. Yes. Mm -hmm. You think? But that's about the extent of it. Uh, there's a lot of other problems, but I thought the acting was fine. I love it that you chose to believe a whole backstory about <laughs> Nicole Kidman's accent rather than the Occam's razor of it, which is that she should just be Australian and things. Like, mm -hmm. I just watched this movie with her and Zac Efron where, like, she ends up, like, in this love affair with Zac Efron. This actually, like, oh. very cute movie that's on Netflix what? right now. It's actually quite good, believe what it or not. What is it? I might have watched it. Hmm. Uh, it's quite good. You should check it out. And um, she's Australian in the movie. And I'm like, why did she get this? just do this all the time? Is her Australian time? accent yeah. any good? She's yeah, fine. Spoiler alert, it isn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, she could barely pull it off. Yeah, she's like trying to do Sydney when she's really from Melbourne. It just, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't really have a problem with her, other than the fact that I realized, oh, fucking hell, she's using another accent. And it's a little effectuated, but I don't think the problem was that she slipped in and out of it like she does in other I mean, she's trying to be American. So I guess on the page, that accent is appropriate for the character. And I thought that's the least of my complaints. You had some issues, Kevin, with the actual like police 
procedural part of this oh, series yeah. like from the very beginning. Do you yeah. want to just because by the way, I'm just going to tip my hand guys right now and tell you I fucking loved watching every fucking second of this show. Me too. Mm-hmm. It was my it was a great <laughs> great thing to binge last weekend. So I took none of this shit seriously. <laughs> Kevin yeah. had a lot of fucking questions and it started with the police procedural part. Go ahead Kevin, you want to go ahead and discuss that? Okay, Lee. I have issues with the timeline and stuff like that right. but that's not what you want me to talk about you want me to talk about what this police department yes. was doing sure. and why this like made absolutely no sense sure. to me yeah okay so first of all <laughs> is this a, an accident or a homicide we don't because know. they seem to think it's a homicide and they're certainly acting like it's a homicide and they're also all the other people are acting like they still think it is an accident because you think at the end of the first night, Amelia, who is the the bride, she goes to the police station to narc out Tag, that Tag was having an affair with Merritt. If she thinks it's an accident, why is that relevant? And then they show like a photo and she's like, did somebody hurt her? It's like, well, what the fuck is this? Who's you're giving you information? A what is it? What is it you're like thinking that all this is going on? Because if it's an accident, why have all these police people been going through everybody's closets and literally going through the drawers and the dirty dishes because somebody drowned i mean it's clear to us this is a murder as viewers but that's because we're watching it it's just like it's never sort of clear in that world until like the press arrives in episode five that anybody knows that this is a murder i mean if somebody you know drowned like i see why you cancel the wedding but you're also like, we can still do the interview with People Magazine and have the book launch. They'll never know. They'll yeah, never... but they had to send the oysters back. They sent the oysters back, but not the cake. A lot of oysters for some reason. I don't know. I'm sure there's some symbolism. Chekhov's behind oysters. That. Chekhov's oysters. <laughs> yeah, but here's the other thing for me. It's like they fly in this state police detective because apparently, what, they have no detectives and then talking, they have a super high tech interrogation room, but no detectives of their own. So why does the Massachusetts police need to fly somebody to Nantucket on a helicopter for what is called then as an accidental death? Why is that the first thing? Yeah, get on a plane and go to Martha's Vineyard and then take the ferry over. Plus, how is this woman getting around the island? Where the fuck is she staying when you're saying, oh, it's a holiday weekend. Good luck. Is it just for the purpose of having a new cop come in and so that she can bicker with the other cops? Exposition, and man. Then, but then at the end, they realize they really love each other and they work great together. So, Roger, this is the babysitter the DA sent over. First time in a helicopter? No. Just need some coffee. There was no in-flight meal service. <laughs> I thought the whole police part of it, where they're like, they've got everybody's voicemail. What, what probable cause, even if you have the technology to do all this crazy shit, why are you doing this crazy shit? But you love Donna Lynn Champlin, though, right? From Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Oh, she's great in Crazy she's Ex-Girlfriend, great. <laughs> you know. <laughs> here's my issue with the police part. Like, I can suspend whatever, like, I'm just watching this for entertainment. But here's the thing. I've read all of her books. <laughs> I was like, I'm just watching this for entertainment. Not like you, Flynn. What are you, <laughs> what are you coming with? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, here was my issue is I've read every single one of those books. Uh-huh. And the police chief is a recurring character in all those books. And his name is Ed Kapanesh. It is not this guy. Uh-huh. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? They created a fake police chief. They created a real police chief, Laura, not a fake police chief. He's just different than the one in the book. No, but the real police chief in all the books was a very big character. And spoiler, he like dies in the last finale book. So he was like a spoiler major character. Alert. Sorry. Wow. I mean, and, which was, you know, so I'm like, he was kind of a big character. I'm like, why did they make like this police chief that I've never heard of? Who is clearly not the police chief from the book. Yeah. So that's my issue there. There were a lot of issues, Toby, with continuity, timelines, magical like times of day shifting. It was very soapish. Like I uh, occasionally watch like the Young and the Restless in General Hospital. And there's this thing that happens on the Young and the Restless, not so much General Hospital, where a character will be wearing an outfit and we'll see that character. It happened with Nikki Newman last week. You'll be seeing her in the same outfit. She eats breakfast in that outfit. She eats lunch in that outfit. She eats dinner in that outfit. And then you see her having breakfast the next day with a different person in a different restaurant in the same outfit. And then it's all of a sudden a cocktail party and then breakfast again in the for previous outfits it's like continuity 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 this show was fucking full of that shit like with like hair daytime nighttime you'd see people in an interrogation room the next second they were at like in the kitchen plus you had multiple timelines going on at the same time did you find yourself confused at all watching this in terms of like timeline continuity stuff I, it's hard to say because the whole plot is so sort of weird and unsatisfying that 
I didn't feel like I got at all stressed out if I didn't know exactly what time it was because uh-huh. it was just like more shit that was happening. And uh, I don't know. I didn't think it was very well written. And it was a show where you figure out pretty, pretty quickly that a this isn't the kind of show where you like look for clues and try to anticipate who was the actual killer based on clues they've cleverly hidden. It's just like, okay, we're just going to go through a whole bunch of different people who are going to look like suspects for a minute. Then it's going to turn out that it was something else that led you to them. And then at the end, there's going to be like two or three people left and it's going to be one of those. And that's going to just be the way it works. So it's like, how much do you actually have to pay attention to anything like that specific. So once I kind of rightly or wrongly kind of made that judgment is like, all right, I'll just kick back and just watch whatever happens on the screen without thinking about it too much. But I was like, what's going on here? What are these characters supposed to be about? Like, cause the characters are not very finely drawn, right? They're all kind of types. They're the classic. I can sum you up in one sentence and they act in ways like the idea that, you know, Benji's best man is going to try and seduce his bride to be like in the morning in a house with open windows, <laughs> knowing that he's like around like it's nonsensical. Right. So at this point, it's like you're kind of reviewing a cartoon. What is going on here? Like, why did they even make this thing? I liked the little guest house that Benji gets to, uh, that, Same. that shooter guy got to stay in. I was like, I would like to stay in that little guest house. Yes. I might close the blinds, though, if I was in that little guest house. It's an HGTV stand-in. Like. <laughs> it's location porn. It's money. It's like it's like aspiration porn, but it's not like Big Little Lies style of that. It's more like, it's definitely mm. more Hallmarky. Yeah, but also like that whole interrogation opening sequence was mm-hmm. very Big Little Lies, right? Where they bring in like all these like the color, quote, colorful characters where they're going to gossip about the people that we don't even know as part of an, like a cutesy exposition dump with like the wedding planner like and the maid, but then also Dakota Fanning's character. It was just kind of like, oh, this was like a cute, and I don't know if that was in the book, Lara, was it? Or was that I can't just remember. A, no. they they, all, all the books start to blend together, but yeah. I, I liked that part too. I kind of liked that. I thought that was just kind of fun. I just found it entertaining because you, the wedding planner guy who was like, we're bored, let's go buy a monkey rich. Oh, they're rich. Child sex ring on a private island rich. I'm bored. Let's go buy a monkey rich. Kill someone and get away with it rich. I just found those people kind of entertaining. I was like, this is just entertaining, you know? I mean, I think basically it feels like it's got a lot of the signifiers of prestige TV Mm -hmm. in that you get a couple of big name actors and then you've got these other actors who you've seen in like other like quote unquote prestige TV things. You got the like location porn, you've got the beautiful cinematography like in this, you even have sort of a meta intro where they're all dancing and having fun (laughs) out on the front yard and stuff. It's it's got all this sort of prestige ish stuff. Prestige adjacent. <laughs> yeah, but it's just not written well enough right. to like carry like an actual prestige show that is like good, I guess. You know, if we did one of those flash mob dance scenes on our Patreon, I think we would get a lot more subscribers. Oh, well, that's why Laura did the segue for me. <laughs> Fuck yeah, she did. I was did. thinking, here, how am I going to get into this? <laughs> nice job, Laura. We're Good in the job, section. Laura. Yes. Hero, Laura Bricker. But Laura, what is, the, what is the URL to type in to get to us? Um, I don't know, but Are I have... Are you fucking kidding me? You don't <laughs> it's know. It's been 10 years. It is literally the first... Four fucking seconds of this podcast. Ten years. For 500 episodes. Ten years. For ten years. Patreon.com slash what? Partners in Crime Media? There you go. Oh, thank God. My God. <laughs> now, now test Toby. I, Toby, did you I hear what not, we just said? I am, not, I am not buy a monkey rich, but I am kill a monkey angry right now. <laughs> uh, I would never kill a monkey. No, you would never kill an animal. Or eat a cat or anything any like that. Kind. Uh, but on Patreon, you get all sorts of great exclusive podcasts. We have 641 exclusive podcasts right now. You got to get listening right away. First thing off, the new episode of the Crime Writers on After Show. This week, Rebecca and I are going to talk about a surprise concert that we went to. Yes, a tiny desk concert. A tiny desk concert. We're going to give you the behind the scenes of what it's like to go to a tiny desk concert. We have other great podcasts like Married with Podcasts, in which Rebecca and I 
give advice. We give advice to a woman who wants to ghost her hairstylist, but this hairstylist is persistent. It's hard to quit her. So No, she's making it hard to quit her. She's making it hard to quit her, yeah. Another great podcast we have is Toby Ball's Deep Dive Book Club podcast. Now, Toby's got a new episode coming up, but you want to listen to the current one. It's a discussion of the book Bright Young Women. By Jessica Knoll. With Rebecca Lavoy mm-hmm. and Allison Horcrux with Toby Horcrux. Ball. Horcrux. Hor- Horcrux. Horcrux. <laughs> Horcrux is the uh, thing from Harry Potter. Harry Potter. That, Potter. Thing that, that transphobe wrote about. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, fuck me. All right. And, <laughs> but on uh, Tuesday, Toby is doing a live recording of the book that they uh, read, which was called The Wager. And what is that about, Toby? The wager is about how much it sucked to be in the British Navy in okay. like the 1730s and 40s. They're trying to go around Cape Horn, which is you're going around the tip of South America, which is where the Southern Atlantic and Southern Pacific Oceans meet. And it's just like abominable weather the whole time. And they've got scurvy and people are dying Amazing. at incredible rates. And then their boat breaks up and they get stranded. It's basically it's like an adventure story. And the British Navy back in the 1700s. It's pretty wild. A lot of it is about sort of the uh, the deprivations they have to go through. Then some of it's about how they kind of rescue themselves. But it's it's just nuts. Yeah, it's just lots nuts. of barnacles, lots of sores on private parts, that kind of thing. That sounds super uplifting. Yeah. I read the I read the Blackbeard book. It was the same fucking thing, like barnacles, sores on dicks. It's really brutal. Yeah, it's, <laughs> but like the attrition rate, like they, they come back. I think the attrition rate is like 60% of oh, the yeah. people just die. Uh, yeah, dead people. Sounds yeah. uplifting. In yeah. uh, other funny stuff. Drinking rum instead of water. It's wild. Everybody's Rebe- mercury poisoning. <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I was just going to say, on the next Leave it to Bricker. <laughs> Uh, There's no sores on Dixon Barnacles. No, no, no. There are some saddle sores because Lara goes back for a whole other attempt at playing polo. So what happened there, Lara? Well, the highlight of that was that I don't know the rules of polo, so I got in trouble for committing a super foul. Oh, a super foul. Yes, super foul. And this lady went crazy. It was quite an experience, though. And... um, I learned that I would have to have a whole nother level of Patreon to finance Polo if that's something I decide to take up. But it was you don't it have was, Winbury you know money, yeah. Yeah, I don't have the Winbury Nantucket money. So Buy a yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah, so it was quite an experience playing Polo, and I can cross it off the bucket list. Yeah, and another podcast we have is Rebecca's ongoing look at the Karen Reed case, the Readathon, and uh, in the latest episode, we hear from yet another juror with their uh, take on what happened inside and what parts of the testimony that they heard really rang through. All right. So, Kevin, does thus end the business section? Thus ends the business section. I'm going to go ahead and fade that music out right now. So, Kevin, who's our next sponsor for this podcast? Uh, We're sponsored by Roe. If you've heard of Ozempic or Wagovi, you've probably heard three things. They're effective, but they're expensive, and they're hard to get. Well, that's where Roe comes in. Through Roe, you can access prescription compounded GLP-1s with the same weight loss ingredient as brand name GLP-1s at a fraction of the cost. Roe has compounded GLP-1s in stock now. If you qualify, your medication ships in just one to four days. Don't have time to schedule a doctor's appointment? No problem. With Roe, you can see if you qualify from the comfort of your own home. So go to roe.co. Slash CWO. CWO. Membership starts at $99 for your first month. Medication costs are separate. That's ro.co slash CWO. CWO. Go to ro.co slash safety for black box warning and full safety information. Compounded medication is not required to and does not receive FDA review or approval. Prescription only. The medication must be paired with diet and exercise modifications in order to achieve stated results. That's ro.co slash CWO. CWO. Kevin, who's yes. sponsoring us right now? Okay, uh, we're brought to you by Quince. Quince? Yeah, hey, look, we're um, into fall right now, and it's back to school, and so all those short shorts, tank tops, all those, you know... 
cool linen clothes. That yes. would be, th- those are all going in the closet. You got to get ready for it's cashmere sweater time. It's cashmere. If you're going to go out and get decorative gourds. Yes. Miniature decorative gourds. Decorative gourd season. Yes, that's right. You got to shift your wardrobe. Luckily, Quince offers timeless and high quality items that you'll adore, ensuring your wardrobe stays fresh and you don't blow your budget. And remember, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Yes, they sure are. I love Quince so much, Kevin. Yeah. I was actually shopping on Quince like earlier today on my phone while I was mm-hmm. editing something. Mm-hmm. <sighs> There's something I want so badly. Tell me. It's a cashmere cardigan. Of course it is. It's so cute. But does it break the bank? No, of course it doesn't break exactly. the bank. Then I'll allow it. Oh, I thanks. will I will allow it. Thanks for allowing it. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. How awesome is that? Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high quality closet essentials, like a crop cashmere sweater. Go to mm. quince.com slash crime, crime for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash crime. Crime to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash crime. crime. So, Kevin, who's our sponsor for this episode? Hey, we're brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh. Back to school season means shopping, after school activities, and a lot less time. So skip the meal planning and grocery store runs with nutritious and delicious meals from HelloFresh. They handle most of the prep, too. And they've got great stuff, not just for weeknights after everybody gets home from school. you got great stuff here uh, that we got in our last HelloFresh uh, delivery. Great stuff for kids that you can pack. Bring, send it to school with it. I'll get your mouth. That is so cute. Yeah, this is the, uh, I've got the card right here with the uh, directions for kids. Cheesy spinach roll-ups with ranch dipper, carrot sticks, apple slices, and tortilla chips. So this is you like a... You can make a little bento box little for bento your box kids. with cute things. So, I mean, you know, I don't think they have sushi that goes with this, but this wonderful uh, meal comes, you know, with carrots and hummus and cream cheese and apples and... Tortilla chips. I and want that. Tortillas. Yeah, you, and it's very easy make to make that uh, for me. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll make these for you. So cute. You're not a little kid. I don't but, care. I, I would like, eat the heck out of this. Yeah, this this meal also just takes five minutes it's a to lunch make. Bunch. I mean, it's not like in the, the like Breakfast Club where Claire opened up her little bento box and everybody thought it was weird. Yeah. People are going to be jealous. Yeah. And for a limited time, kids eat free. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Crime Writers Kids. Crime Writers Kids. To unlock this exclusive offer. One free kids meal per box for two months oh. while subscription is active. Let's get that. That's free kids meals just by going to HelloFresh.com slash Crime Writers Kids. Crime Writers Kids. So Kevin, who's our sponsor right now? Hey, we're brought to you by Babbel. Babble. Yeah. Hey, we're more than halfway through the year, so let's fast forward to the end. Did you check off all of your dream goals? Are you still daydreaming? Are you still working on your New Year's resolution? We. This <laughs> This is a great time because you can say, like, I'm finishing last year's New Year's resolution or I'm getting ready for the next one, and that resolution's got to be learning a new language. Oh. So speak like a whole new you with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that gets you talking. You know, I, you could go the way of like spending hundreds of dollars like in private tutors and that kind of stuff. But Babbel, just, you can get it done in like 10 minute lessons. You can. Right? And they're designed by people like having real conversations, right? So that's the way Babbel gets you talking. It's not like when you were in French class in high school and you had to raise your hand. Madame to Tobert go- would like, like roll her eyes because she knew I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, où est la double v Like, it's way better than that, right? <laughs> I just, you know. Je vous la bagno. So, like, it just, you know, it's way better, way, way better than that. Everything is focused on conversation. Ah, not vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. Allez, à la bureau. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing declensions. Okay, <laughs> us. So, you'll be ready to talk wherever you go. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners right now. Kevin, you can get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, Mm -hmm. but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash crime writers. Crime writers. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash crime writers. Crime writers. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash crime writers. Rules and restrictions may apply. So Laura Bricker, Slate has an article from a few days ago. 
that says uh, this is by the way, there's a ton of articles about this series that are so funny and they're so good. And they it's a range is all over the place because this series, by the way, has been a huge hit. Like everybody is fucking watching it. But yes. there is this very funny headline on Slate and they, they've been sharing it on social in a bunch of different ways. But one of the ways they shared it was Nicole Kidman is a huge star. So why does she keep doing stuff like this? <laughs> <laughs> and they specifically talk about the mid stuff she keeps doing and the very bad wig she wears in this. Yeah. Oh, the hair. <laughs> the hair. That was, I, I had issues with that. I was like, watch. And I'm like, and my friend Jen did as well. She's like, okay, for all the money that this lady reportedly has, could she get a decent blowout? It looks like she has a rat's nest on her head. Horrible wig. Horrible, horrible It was wig. horrendous. I was like, what, what the hell? Like, we have everything else here is looking perfect. And her hair, it, it was painful. I was waiting for a squirrel to come out. So were you confused by the constantly switching timelines? Yeah, it was, it was hard to follow at times because I was like, oh, okay, wait. Now, this happened in the way past. Okay, so there was one timeline. It was like when... They're like, they ask Amelia, like if she ever knew Shooter before. And then she's like, no. I mean, I think in the end, it all sort of tied up. But at the time, I'd be like, huh. So we're in the interview room, but now we're in something different that happened. I think it was most confusing for the timeline with Tag and Merritt, because I was like, when did they exactly get together? A year ago. Okay, now she's pregnant. Like, how long have they been together? I'm like, well, I'm going to assume they got together after the engagement party. But like, how long ago was that? Like a year, a few months? I don't know, long enough to get that expensive $18,000 bracelet, I guess. So I think at the time, I was like kind of looking for like a bigger meaning in the timeline being confusing. Like, okay, this is being done. Some sort of just strategic thing. So suddenly I'm gonna be like, aha, that was so clever how they did that. But in the end, I was like, actually, that was just kind of confusing. Yeah, you had continuity issues too. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> I mean, the same thing. I even forgot about that year ago timeline. Again, there was the timeline of the day before, and then there's the timeline, which I guess is the present day. And then, like, that whole interrogation time, like, create a third timeline that it didn't, you know, it's like all of a sudden they're back in the interrogation room. But, like, why is it, is it dark out? Is it just, it, that whole thing was just really incoherent for me. And it made it, yeah, it made it hard for me to kind of, like, get my bearings. Um, but, like you said, I don't think there's a lot here that was supposed to make sense or that anybody cared about whether it did or not. All right. Can I tell you something about Nicole Kidman's character Greer that I really loved? Mm -hmm. I really loved how she treated uh, her son's fiance. I thought it was fucking hilarious that from like the moment she sort of walks in the house, she's like immediately in daughter-in-law mode, like already, mm. where she's just like, never go in his office again. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, obviously you don't care about your wearing. Wedding dress be damned. There was just something about that that was like surprising and the funny family to me. Robe. Yes, you're not wearing the family robe, <laughs> just like the fuck the family robe. There was something about that that I super loved because it was like the more obvious choice is to have somebody pretend to be nice and then have them like be snide later. And it's just like there's none of that. It's just like immediately in that mode. Come on. Are you going to be in the family photo? If you want me to. If I want. Uh, come on. Do you want? No, I don't think so. Well, I think it would mean a lot to Benji to know that you gave a shit about participating in his family, so... I give a shit. Really? Do you? You don't act like you do. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. You don't act like you're in love. I actually think Nicole Kidman was, I mean, it's definitely a very mid-show, and she's, you know, gives kind of a mid-performance in it, but there are moments in this that you definitely see, like, the Nicole Kidman-ness of her, and those are some of the scenes where that kind of happens, because she's very, very good at being scary. I think that that's her like best mode, in my opinion. So Toby, a set of characters that sort of float in and are sort of there like ghosts for much of the show are Amelia's parents who get flown in from the Midwest, her very sad mother, her very like Midwest dad. They sort of brought in, they're sort of present for the family chaos and do nothing and say nothing. A couple of little scenes with them in their cozy bedroom uh, Did course, you bring her suicide pills to the wedding? Checkoff's pills. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they're not used well in this, don't you think, Toby? Because they could be like our Greek chorus and they just don't use them that way. Yeah. So I thought at one point that maybe the theme was they're trying to contrast like the lifestyles of the rich and somewhat famous with, you know, more middle class people and how strange and it's sort of a clash of cultures or whatever. But as you were saying, 
Amelia's parents are like barely there. As a matter of fact, you could easily just not have them in there, except for the fact that somehow you needed to get these suicide pills in the house. And so it's like, oh, okay, well, maybe we'll make it so that her mom uh, has, you know, terminal cancer and might want to like self euthanize. Of course, the idea that you're, you're going to decide to do it during your daughter's wedding <laughs> seems a little strange. It's like, it seems like you didn't really need case. to pack that stuff. It's just in case it gets really bad. Toby. Yeah, they might have bad fish, shellfish or something. I don't know. Who hasn't gone to Nantucket with poison? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. So I, you know, in the end, I think that was really all that. It was there for you don't get much of a sense of their personalities or how they react to anything. They don't even want to get the hell out of there. Basically, they're just like, oh, well, we'll just hang out. So I don't know. It's just in keeping with a lot of things where it's like, well, why is this in there? There's a thing with the kayak. Like there's a big deal about it. It's super nice. And Liv Schreiber, it's his favorite thing. And he wants to talk to people out. He wants to go out kayaking, but nobody ever actually goes out kayaking. It doesn't end up having anything to do with the murder or anything else. And it's just, he didn't put it away on this one night. And so that's like a slight little bit of misdirection. The bracelet is found in the kayak. Yeah, but you can find it anywhere. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. I, it really the fact that it was found in the kayak means nothing. It's true. Nor do they even think that it means anything at any point. Well, the other part that I was like, why is this even part of the plot is when Will, the youngest son, is just going to like take off in the sailboat in the storm. Yes. Yeah. And then come right back. A perfect what storm. The f- what the fuck was that, Laura? I was like, so what was the point of that? Like if he had fallen off and whacked his head, like something could have happened. Nothing happened. I'm like, okay. So that was just some like side drama that didn't really go anywhere. It's very low stakes. In the end, like the solution of this whole thing, spoiler alert, is that Dakota Fanning is so pissed at her husband for sleeping with Isabel that she decides to poison and then drown her father-in-law's mistress. Why though? You know why? For the money. Because she's going to give birth to the next heir. She was up for the money, yeah. Because oh, her, hus- the- her yeah. husband wouldn't get his part of the trust if that baby were born. We're given the motive before that, and then we think it's somebody else that did it. And the m- minute they gave us the motive, I turned to Kevin and I was like, oh, it's Dakota Fanning. She did oh. it. Because that baby I, is like the- I think I'd forgotten about that aspect of things. I was yeah. like, what the fuck is going on here? Not that that makes it that much better. Well, it would restart the wait for the trust if they had to wait for the next baby to turn 18. Yeah. And the whole thing with her is like she's this petulant baby sort of sitting on the side and she's just like she sees her husband with Isabel and she's just like he's a child. He's never going to fucking do what he needs to do. He's just going to keep fucking this other woman. And I have to now step up again and be like the adult who does the thing that he'll never do. So <laughs> Which is murder somebody? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even going to murder this woman. Which so. apparently I have to step up and do the murder. That she said he, if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. Because he, she saw him almost commit the murder and then not do it. And then like wuss out on doing it. Remember? He had the gun and he was pointing it at her and then Isabel like talked him out of it or whatever. And she was like, God damn it. He was going to kill her and then didn't know I have to finish the job. He was definitely the douchiest character in this show. Yes, he was. But funny. That was good. I, I love to hate him. I, did, I thought it was the most ridiculous. Moment. This is where I like I tapped out. Right? I just couldn't believe this, this anymore. This is when you tapped out? What, when, when she came out that she was a high end um, sex worker? Oh, I was and already that's gone. This all began? The I scene was part. the book launch. <laughs> and 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 so Tag gets up and he's drunk and then he falls off the stage at the exact moment that a marching band walks in <laughs> and balloons fall from the ceiling that we've never seen with no indication that was about to happen. And then it was so Monty Python because even the shot was a close up of Nicole Kidman's face with a snap pullback of the whole chaotic scene. And I'm like. Okay, this is this is just a cartoon. This is fucking ridiculous. Yes. And not in a fun way to me. Yes. Uh, but you were you, you do have a note here, a very judgy note about uh, Tag's marijuana use, Kevin. What's up with that? It's not his use. It's just as a character device. He's got to have uh, a joint. hanging and out a of his mouth. Joint too. Yes. A big joint, too. Because yeah. he's married to Like he's her. Hunter F- <laughs> S. Thompson or something? Oh, yeah. I mean, what the hell else he's is he going to do? Right? I don't know. He's literally got nothing to do. Yeah. It, it yeah. helps with his stra- like his practice for trying to whack the seagull. <laughs> no, it's bored as hell. Gets him in the zone. Gets him in the zone. Yeah. <laughs> have you met All Modern? 
All Modern brings you the best of modern furniture and decor. And from September 16th to 23rd, you'll save up to 50% during their fall sale. Relax and recharge with plush sofas and cozy rugs. Or set your space for hosting with durable dining tables. All on sale at All Modern. And then get them delivered for free in days. You heard that right. Days. That's Modern Made Simple. Shop up to 50% off during All Modern's fall sale, September 16th through 23rd at allmodern.com. Vitamin Water was born in New York because New Yorkers wanted more. Like more flavor to go with all the flavor. A refreshing drink after climbing six flights of stairs to a walk-up apartment or standing in the subway station in 100-degree heat. Drink Vitamin Water. It's from New York. Capella University is rethinking higher education. With their game-changing FlexPath format, you can earn your degree on your schedule so you can fit education seamlessly into your life. Imagina tu futuro de otra manera en capella.edu. This episode is supported by FX's Grotesquery, a new series from executive producer Ryan Murphy. Heinous crimes unsettle a small community, and the local detective feels these atrocities are eerily personal, as if someone or something is taunting her. Starring Nisi Nash Betts, Courtney B. Vance, Leslie Manville, and Travis Kelsey. FX's Grotesquery premieres September 25th on FX. Stream on Hulu. All right, let's do what we do. Let's let our listeners know should they check out The Perfect Couple, the hit series on Netflix. Laura Bricker, thumbs up or thumbs down for The Perfect Couple, the adaptation of the Alan Hildebrand novel. Well, you know what? I've heard what everybody says, but I don't care. I binge watched this all in like one day. It was just like a satisfying, fun, mindless, entertaining watch. I've read all the Ellen Hildebrand books. It was entertaining. It was kind of ridiculous. I felt like there was some commentary on just the total douchiness of the elite, wealthy, uber wealthy culture on Nantucket, which I appreciated, especially Um, when there are some twists later in this series that I feel like really kind of put that back on the people that are super douchey. So I was like, ha ha. And I I found, you know, overall, I was just like, I know some people have issues. I had issues with Nicole Kidman's accent. I had issues with Nicole Kidman's hair. I have issues with her in anything that we watch her in. I'm still watching it because it was kind of entertaining. So um, this is a thumbs up. Toby Ball, thumbs up or thumbs down for the perfect couple. Uh, I like Nicole Kidman. (laughs) Thumb sideways. Uh, uh, as much as you like Nancy Grace. <laughs> uh, no, I do like her. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Whatever. I mean, this is really, it's not a serious show. There's some stuff that's amusing in it. If you try and make sense of it, it's really freaking disappointing because it doesn't make any sense. On the other hand, if you don't really care, that stuff doesn't really make sense and characters aren't really real and it doesn't matter what happens. Uh, and you just want to lie on the couch and sort of mindlessly watch something, I guess it's fine. I guess I'm a mild thumbs down. Like, I feel like I can't really recommend it, but I'm almost a thumb sideways because who gives a shit? <laughs> um, so that's kind of that's kind of where I am. Kevin Flynn. There once was a wedding on Nantucket, but the bridesmaid went and kicked the bucket. Mm. With past and present tense, the plot makes no sense. The script is done, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wrote that just now. I'm yeah. a thumbs down. This is really stupid. What can I say? I did not like this. Yeah. And I really wanted to go back in time and kick myself in the ass for thinking this would be something we should review. I not, I think it was. Oh, 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 Laura Bricker, <gasps> you're lucky you're over there. You're lucky you're over there. Because, I'm right here. We can <gasps> fight later. We'll fight later. Oh, the fisticuffs are going to happen. Look at look it. I just... I don't, you know, I mean, I think it started off interesting. You know, it's 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 their take on a um, locked door mystery. Everybody's at this wedding, but I think it just it just meandered into uh, buffoonery, and uh, I didn't like it. So I'm a thumbs down. This is my take on the perfect couple. As I said to Kevin, the minute it was over. This is the kind of shit I watch the minute you leave the house to Empire Baseball. And I will watch the whole fucking thing and then you'll walk in and I'll immediately change the channel because I'll be like embarrassed because you'll be like, what are you watching? And I'll be like some dumb thing on Netflix, but I will be fucking loving it the entire time. Uh, This is a very, very good example of a completely mid, totally lovable, very soapy 
super dumb and very fucking fun Netflix series. I loved watching it and it is dumb and there are things in it that don't make sense and it is cheesy and it is not highbrow and I loved watching it. And if I love watching something, even if it's dumb, I cannot give it a thumbs down. So yeah, I'm a fucking thumbs up for the perfect couple, motherfucker. I loved it. I loved it. I loved watching it. I wanted to watch the next episode. I knew what was going to happen as soon as they mentioned money. I love the perfect couple. I'm not even embarrassed about it. Yay to me and yay to everyone else out there who enjoyed it. Don't even call it a guilty pleasure. It's just a goddamn pleasure. It just is. There's a lot of profanity in these reviews. There is. It's like we're coming into like Netflix, um, made for Netflix Christmas I movies loved it. and holiday movies. I loved it. And those are going to be in the same vein I as just this feel like I have to defend it with some passion because Kevin hated it so yeah. much. <laughs> I fucking like it. I fucking hate it. I don't fucking care. He said fuck right. it in his Nantucket Meandering thing. buffoonery. <laughs> Kevin Flynn. It's the world's Meandering most buffoonery. famous dirty limerick. What can I say? <laughs> I also, by the way, watched The Kissing Booth, which was so shitty. I did too. So oh. shitty. I did too. I, I wouldn't give that a thumbs up, but I watched the whole thing. I watched the whole thing. I watched the part two as well. <laughs> Me too. Now it's time for my favorite part of the podcast. A little something I like to call... The crime, crime of the of week. The week. <laughs> After two decades, Andy Norton has finally found relief from persistent nasal congestion and sinus pain. It happened when they sneezed in the shower and out popped a Lego piece that had been lodged in there since 1998. Andy suddenly remembered as a kid shoving a small Lego brick up their nose. <laughs> Andy tried to retrieve it by snapping it to another Lego, but now both pieces were stuck in the nostril. Mom fished one of the bricks out with tweezers, unaware the first piece was still in there, which is where it stayed undetected for 25 years. Andy has suffered from all sorts of sinus issues since then. After blowing the Lego out, they immediately felt a difference, breathing freely for the first time in decades. Andy plans to keep the Lego as a souvenir. Ugh. Panel, there is more where that came from. What is going to blow out of Andy's other nostril? Laura Bricker, what do you think? Uh, Jimmy Hoffa? <laughs> <laughs> Toby Ball, what do you think is going to blow out of Andy's other nostril? I was just going to say, I was at the dentist one time, and the dentist was like, hold on a second. He's like... You've, you've got a piece of glass stuck in your gum, like just past like your your last tooth. And oh. I was like, I do. And they like pulled it out. They're like, yeah. I was like, oh, like, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> anyway, uh, I do remember there used to be some cartoon I read when I was a little kid. And this one, like the little hero of the cartoon was constantly sticking marbles up his nose. Yes. Mm. Wow. Uh, and there was a little like fairy godfather who's always lecturing about it. Anyway, so maybe a marble. I don't what know. What do you think, Kevin Flynn? What's the next thing that's going to come out of Andy's nostril? I don't know what's coming out of their nostril, but you're never going to believe where the Lincoln log comes from. <laughs> oh, God. All I can think about is that other sock that's always missing. You know, the other that's one. <laughs> An entire Something. sock up his nose? Yes. We thought it was in the dryer, but no. We thought the dog ate it, but no. hell no. All right, that's going to do it for us. But Laura Bricker, if folks want to reach out to you on social media and say hello, how can they find you there? Uh, you can find me at Laura Bricker on Instagram and Twitter. And Toy Ball, if folks want to reach out to you and ask you questions about your brand new podcast, Rip Current, how can they find you online? At Toby Ball and H. And Kevin Flynn, if folks want to reach out to you and ask you for more limericks about the perfect couple, how can they find you? My Kevin P. Flynn. And if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram and tell me how much you also loved the perfect couple, you can find me everywhere at Reb Lavoy. You can also follow the show everywhere at Crime Writers On. You can follow us on YouTube, but I encourage you mostly to join our amazing community community in our official Crime Writers on Facebook discussion group. Just go to Facebook, find our page. There's a link there about how to join the group. Get episodes early and ad-free and everything else we make at, get this, Laura, patreon.com slash partners in crime media. There's so much stuff back there. That's amazing. Even you make stuff that goes back there. It's incredible. Uh... Our theme song was composed and performed by Ty Gibbons. Our editor is the terrific Livy Burdett. The executive producer of this show is Kevin Flynn. This show was recorded in Studio C, the closet in our New Hampshire basement where one of us also spends their day madly writing on a laptop while the other one tries to hit waterfowl with a golf ball. Four. On behalf of all the crime writers, thanks so much for listening. We will catch you later. later. You can hear the podcast where they discuss the book Bright Young Women, but no, 
No, the wager. No, that's David coming Graham. up. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling. What was the previous one? The previous it's okay. one. He's right. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. All right. Okay. He knows what he's doing. This is Toby. the most chaotic. Right. Place. It's, it's been it's... ten years. <laughs> All right. Let me take it. Okay, I got. I'm just it. listening to every other word, so that's I get good. confused. That's it. Okay. Let me take it again. Sometimes it takes a different approach to help you unlock your true potential. Capella University's game-changing FlexPath format helps you learn at your own pace and fit earning a degree into your life. From before you enroll to after you graduate, you'll be supported by people who are invested in your success, so you can pursue your goals knowing that help is available if you need it. Imagina tu futuro de otra manera en capella.edu.